Hello world, and welcome to another episode of Kerbal Space Program Campaign Mode. Here we are, aboard the Cobbler Space Lab, with Kevin, Jean-Luc and Katrina. Very happy to be up here, still doing massive amounts of science in the name of all shoes and footwear anywhere, everywhere. Um, so far they've come up with the lightest trainers known to man. <laughs> We're just passing over Kafrika, which, by order of this button, we should be returning to. Here we are at Kafrika Space Center. Yeah, that's what it is, Kafrika Center now. Now, a couple things. This place is pretty barren. There's nothing much going on here, but uh, we have to put a change. We have to make a change to that. We're going to be building some utility vehicles. Uh, we need some more housing as well for training astronauts, crews. They have to live on site now, you see. You know, before it was all just a rather casual affair, but now there's a proper program going along. Speaking of which, our uh, three intrepid astronauts are up in the space lab performing various science experiments. But down here, three other intrepid astronauts are about to test out the Kerbal Scientist's newest contraption. Now, as I said previously, I'm sure, at some point, Kerbal Scientists have been studying the moon from afar with telescopes and using science and math and that sort of stuff. They have, you know, they've figured that the moon's going to be pretty light. It's going to be pretty weird to land on. But, and tried to simulate this I'm not quite sure what the terrain is yet, but uh, more telemetry and data and all that kind of stuff will come back when uh, they launch the probe. But uh, until then, scientists have knocked up this rather hideous monstrosity of trusses, struts, and a giant jet turbine as a core in, a t in, t in an attempt to give astronauts the experience of landing on the moon an early training system. Now, this thing, by now, by the time of this video coming up, uh, I will have amended the rules on the forum with the new rules regarding test vehicles. Now, what uh, came to mind, because I wanted to build something like this, I wanted to do test vehicles, but let's just stick a price on this. This is 31,000 well, 32,000, just shy of 32k. Now, that's a lot. 32k, that's a whole rocket. So, if we're messing around in what is potentially highly explosive and completely ruined thing. Now, all, you know, I'm sure if you've tested vehicles and made crazy contraptions, a lot of the time, they explode on the launch pad. So you need to be covered by that. And these rules are, I've got them written somewhere, how it works is you only pay 25% of the vehicle. This is essentially to cover stuff like exploding and to put it in more of a roleplay terms it's uh, whether the vehicle is a success or a failure you are still doing research and you are still learning from that research. If it explodes something's wrong, we work out what the thing that is wrong, we learn there we go. So technically it's a win-win situation the only real downfall is obviously if the crew die. That is why this is equipped with the state-of-the-art ejection system. We have a Gabby's Quick and Dirty Payloads separator here, as well as some large retro thrusters, retro boosters, and two parachutes to launch the crew safely away from the vehicle. I've installed several mods. We've got all sorts of parts now. Science is uh, giving us all these lovely new parts. Look at that for a rover, huh? Cool. Yes, so we're going to take this thing to the launch pad. This is, by the way, MLRV-3B, the Moon Lander Research Vehicle Type 3 Revision B. I've been through a lot. Yeah, here we are on the runway, and that's why I've got those two little legs under there, by the way. The engine will explode otherwise. We're going to extend the truss legs. One of those breaks off. 
Uh, yep. <laughs> Bring this roll down, activate the main engine, activate RCS, and maneuver my keyboard so it's a bit easier. Test systems. Systems are nominal. Uh, the crew is not looking too happy about this vehicle. Uh, we're going to try and get to the other end of the runway, but uh, yeah. We have lift off. And successful landing of a very, very short hop. Those legs are rubbery. But about the best ones I've found so far. Hmm, just seeing whether I can lift this thing and lower it with RCS. Apparently not. Now. We're going very high and off course now. See if we can land it. Very difficult vehicle to maneuver. Uh, what I was trying to do, if you watched uh, one of my other videos and I was rambling on about trying to change the axes of a cockpit, is essentially what I was trying to do is is uh, change it so that this thought the cockpit was facing up and backwards, so that the RCS would be that of an actual rocket in the style of a moon lander, but no it's not, it's like a plane, so you're, I'm using Q and E in the opposite uh, pattern of W and D in RCS here. So, uh, that is, uh, it's also a little nose heavy. And of course, any forward velocity you have to kill has you, before you land, so uh, there's lots of swinging motions. Ah, uh, eject! And that is the patented ejection system, by the way. <laughs> if only as happy was that, so is Gerald. Llama's just in a bit of shock there. There's a little leg still. But yes, that is the ejection system. Uh, and that is why. It's an incredibly unstable platform. Oh, time to tally up the cost of that nightmare. Well, the cost of that nightmare was uh, only 7,994.75, so I rounded up to 7,995 uh, 7, kennies. So, yeah, it's fine. There's also a rule where, just as another covering insurance of even larger failure of vehicles, uh, that is basically win or fail, you get 5,000 for attempting it. This is all real concept stuff and of course it can be abused highly if you could just say every single rocket you launch is a test vehicle, of course, but we don't do nasty things like that now, do we? Now we can afford another attempt at that, I think, so we're going to have another attempt. This time we're going to head over that way to the launch pad and test out translating in this thing. Up a little. <laughs> oh, she's a tricky beast. She's a tricky beast. It's all a lot of throttle work. Sometimes I wish the throttle was somewhere else on the keyboard so that I could have my arms, well, my hands not basically touching each other on constantly. Uh, it's nice to know that the the uh, ejection system works fine. And all I have to do is spam the space bar for it. Oh, that's a bumpy landing. Ah, uh, those legs survive, survive, survive. That is why we want rubbery legs on this test vehicle. This thing is just made to explode. The 
doesn't help with the old backwards RCS. We're getting some height now. 200 meters. This will be a good test of the landing. Now, in my previous video, which wasn't a campaign mode one, the regular Kerbal Space Program, uh, you will have seen another kind of hoppy vehicle. That one was built after this. And uh, that one was actually uh, inspired from this vehicle. I wanted to make a version of it trying in stock since they had the radial engines. Now, <laughs> funny thing is, <laughs> that bloody uh, stock one flies way better than this. So, uh, you know, make of that what you will. But then, of course, this monster is. Insane. How are we doing for RCS fuel? Good. Good. We got tons of fuel. I even stacked four extra half size tanks to the sides there. I wonder how this thing handles on the moon. Just take the whole thing to the moon and replace the uh, jet engine with a rocket engine. Oh, we bounced. Not bad. Bit of a rough landing. Look at that thing sway. Look at that crew. <laughs> They're uh, a bit dumbfounded. <laughs> Dear. Even if Omi's scared of his own piloting. <laughs> oh man. This is a fun little vehicle to fly, actually. I really like it. Oh, see? Look at that little grin. He's like, <laughs> I know what I'm doing. Although our drop tank, or uh, our two side, or two sets of side tanks have just ran out, which means we're a lot lighter, so we don't need as much thrust. However, we're coming up really fast on the tower, and I don't want to be coming up really fast on the tower. There we go. Come on down. Kill that sideways momentum a little. It's also a case of using the nav ball sort of sideways, like. That's the direction I'm going, but to land, I want that just off the bottom of the nav ball where I can't see it. I need like a secondary nav ball. Oh. Yeah. It likes to kind of. Ooh. Come on, girl. Get over here. Yeah. Uh, have we just run out of RCS on the front? We have run out of RCS on the front thrusters. Front thrusters are no longer... Oh, yes, they are. Sorry. We're kind of having a bit of a funny moment here. We're coming in really hot as well. Ah, uh, eject, eject, eject. <laughs> Shit, where'd that go? Whew. Nice. Hey, they're loving that. All smiles there. All smiles and un smiles and sunshine. Oh, and none of the retro boosters exploded. They often explode. But yeah. Oh. Oh. Rotate that up. And there's the butt end of the uh, quick and dirty payloads decoupler, which is a really handy radial attached decoupler. Comes in two forms. It comes a radial to radial attach and a radial to node attached. You know, uh, an underused mod, Gabby's. It's very utility. Very, u very, very utility. Okay, that's enough of that. Enough of that for one day, eh, guys? You smashed up two. That puts us down to actually about 50,000. I'll do the math all at the end of the episode. Uh, yeah, we're going to put this back in the shed for now. Uh, I'm sure the mad scientists will pull another one out. Vroom vroom! The Kerbal Space Center has also uh, put, a, put aside some cash for uh, some utility vehicles, as I said. One of them being an old uh, Jeep from the uh, uh, Crushian Communist States. <laughs> Just an old Jeep. Of which if Omi does like, and Llama doesn't like. <laughs> oh dear.
They're just heading off on a bit of a joyride right now. <laughs> They're gonna just park up. Hey, look! Slam the brakes on. Does this, have, does this thing have brakes? Yes, it does. The damn handbrake! Is that Minimus I saw? Huh. It's getting dark. This thing has shit reversing. I saw an object. There's a lot of debris over there. Okay. Oh no, it's just a star. After hard days of uh, near death experiences with the uh, Moonar Lander research vehicle, Lama, Ifomi, and Gerald have retired to uh, the Space Center's latest toy. An old Jeep. <laughs> We're just going to have a little ride around the Space Center here. Just have a little discussion of what this place needs, really. Well, let's taxi over to the runway a bit. And it's getting, getting quite, you know, it's in the evening here. Uh, look at the sun setting, it's getting pretty dark. This place needs lights. So that's of course uh, something we're going to have to work on. Got to get this runway lit up. We got to get lights on the old launch tower of course. Some nice lights. That's something to work on. This place needs more and more communication equipment as well. Yeah, And we're going to need some housing as well. Where are all the astronauts going to uh, live and train? Need some more housing. So, uh, we're going to have to put up some housing. wonder how good the brake size on this. Pretty good. Yeah, this place is pretty dark. At night. <laughs> Okay, not fooling around. Let's uh let's go park this thing up by the tracking station. There are other astronauts to train. Other devices of training to create. And we're gonna get on with that now. And brakes please, sir. Huh. <laughs> Beep beep. Needs a horn. This thing needs a horn. <laughs> there we go. Put the old handbrake on. And I'll leave that there. Ooh, what are we going to try now? Well, we need to test a few things. First off, we're going to be launching some extremely crazy rockets. So, we need to test our escape systems. What happens if our rocket goes out of control and we've got guys stuck on top of it? Well, generally, they usually die. But we're going to try and avoid that as much as we can with... Let's try a classic, shall we? Well, this is a classic, of course. Let's get this thing slammed onto a uh, decoupler. Of course, that one won't fit. That one kind of won't fit. That one won't fit. Looking good so far. That one won't fit. Hey, there we go, that'll do. This is an unmanned pod. Could do with a couple struts, I think. Once again, this is another classification test vehicle. So. Hmm, that didn't work. That's right, that looks supported. Now we're going to attach this to a rocket. Just a simple liquid rocket somewhere. Possibly even actually a booster. Seems simple enough. A booster. 
Now we need this thing actually to go at a bit of an angle. We're going to attempt to create an artificial 45 degree thingy. What's a thingy you ask? Well it's a thingy. A little launch tower basically. Might have even been wiser to do this on the uh, runway. But hey, that's fine. Of course I've installed a few fair few mods. I always use the term a fair few <laughs> for some reason, but there are always a fair few. Whoop. And of course we have damned robotics here. Currently I suck at them. But we essentially want the rocket to launch like that. Okay. Just keeping that in mind. Can I get that, please? No, because it doesn't work like that. This may have been easier in the space plane thing. Okay, going to rebuild this in the space plane thing. Okay, I've just uh, started on this. Uh, no, I've also put the parachute in. <laughs> but yeah, I've just started to uh, work on the little tripod thing that's going to uh, make this thing stand up. I'm not actually going to be using any mechanical doodahs right now. I'm just going to be... Uh, if I put those there... Which way do I want to go? That way. So I want to be like that. Then I want to be like... Essentially that. Actually, want to be on more than that. I want to be like that, and use these little short ones. I could use those piston things actually, couldn't I, to raise this thing up? That would be a wise idea. In fact, those aren't pistons. Aha! There we go. Lovely. Bit of damned robotics in it. Cool. <clears throat> now let's pretty this thing up a little bit. No, we don't need anything there. We, however, could use a blast plate on the back. Get one of them. Like that. As you do. Safety first. Or oh, remember, safety first, kids. Oh, wrong way, wrong way. <laughs> oh dear. I'm not gonna get very far like that. Straighten it up. Sometimes you can just get carried away with the buttons here and have to restart, but uh, I refuse to. It'll do! It's Kerbal, it'll do! If we grab that. And we rotate it like that. Actually, we might even not need that like that. Probably should have fixed the staging first, but derp! Oh well. Alright, so what have we got going? This first stage we want you to separate from there. Where's that decoupler? That decoupler is there. We want you on your own. Actually we want you in there. Those boosters will fire after this is separated, which is this one. In fact, those boosters will separate at the same time, then we got the separation for that, and then that. Okay, so this is going. So, let's te test the uh, pistons. Should we wait? It's sundown. Let's wait until morning. 
Here we are. Sunrise. Let's test these systems, huh? Seem legit. Whoa. Okay. They are not very good at uh, not exploding. They're not very good at not exploding. Ooh, and that's a bit off angle there, isn't it? That's way off angle. That's fine. And look at that thing go. All right, end the flight. Let's go back to the hangar and we can fix all that. Perhaps we can attach some plates to the bottom of it. Act as feet. There you go, you now have feet. Let's stratify. If one can stratify, they'll probably have one hell of a fit when I try and move those pistons, but we'll see. Once again, save and launch. Okay, so that didn't work. So now there's some fucking asshole's car alarm going off. Thank you. We shall try this again. With hinge this time. Like that. See, that's about right. I'll right, put it right back here. I don't know how much load these can take, so. Learning experience. Just want to build a little support frame for it, really. Okay, dokey! I've completely revised it. That cost us a fair bit of money, that did. Those two failures, I guess. This one actually costs a lot more. And I've just broke it. Fuck. But you know what we can do? We can do Control and Z. I guess it's that back. It breaks Kerbal Engineer. We have to take that off. But here we are. Here it is. Uh, the problem was, is the weight of the rocket booster, it was falling downward and instantly exploding as soon as it hit the structural fuselage. So I've gone for this underslung gantry system. We're going to give this a shot. I'm not going to lie, I've had this on now, it's stable. Took a little while to get, <laughs> get there, took a lot of revision. I don't know, I think it looks kerbal -esque. It looks like a little catapult. We got our counterweight of a giant RCS tank on the back. That's probably where all the money on this thing's going. But, uh, as you can see, she works quite well. I haven't even put down the support legs yet. They just give it a little bit more tension on the ground. And uh, right now we're going to go for a shallow angle launch, I think. Just to initiate something really bad. Alright. Oh no, we're in trouble. We're going madly off course. Madly off course. Eject the system. Damn. Flawlessly. Working flawlessly. However, something to note that can be an issue when you eject the uh, eject the little rocket nose cone, the uh, the panic escape tower, and then hit the parachute, well, the drag you can basically crash into it and explode horribly. That's always a possibility. And interesting, my controls are actually completely locked. I can't move this thing whatsoever. Huh? Wonder what that's all about. I guess this has got some mad kind of heavy SAS in there or something. It's probably got heavy torque or something. It's a Silisco thing, so, you know. But hey, this is going to land safe. In flight. Restart the flight. Let's try that again. Might as well have a couple launches out of this. This one, we'll go for more vertical height, and we'll do it from more of an altitude. But hey, we've got our Panic Escape System test tower. Our test rig. We've used a bit of uh, damned robotics for the uh, rototrons there to lift us. It seemed to work a lot better than uh, 
the uh, hinge and all that. Uh, these bigger struts, these huge strut pole things, they're also damned robotics. Pretty nifty stuff. Yeah, we're gonna go for that kind of angle. And launching in three, two, one. Make rocket go now. Nice. Let's recenter that. Come on, recenter. Thank you. Let's get this up to maximum speed. Then we'll try it with people in it. Interesting though, we are getting a bit of overheating. Uh, that, however, didn't work. We were unable to burn away. And that was some massive G's. No, it wasn't. Looked like it. This is not the optimum way a parachute works. <laughs> I shall meet you back on the ground. And had another successful landing, I guess, even though the launch failed. Alright, let's have another go at that. Three, two, one, and launch! Fire! And get the fuck away from that vehicle. See? It works. Yeah, that works. I'm not going to bore you with this whole descent, because obviously, you know, this is a very lightweight capsule. But yeah. We might want stronger boosters if we have a bigger vehicle, of course. But that's why we have the retro boosters that we can attach to the sides for this or something. Now on to other science projects. And here we are. The first of our unmanned exploration attempts on the moon. To the moon, on the moon. This is uh, the Equinox probe. I picked the name from the comments. Thank you very much. The Equinox probe aboard, aboard the Napoleon launch system, a ridiculous launch system, which has been toned down. This is the Napoleon 2-2. It's actually 1-2, but I'm counting that as 2 because it's got two liquid engines there. Ha ha ha. Yep, two boosters, two liquid engines. The Napoleon 2-2. Is that just a random strut stuck there? It is. We're getting a lot of lag here. There's little bits of crap everywhere. And there's a dead bit of that, um... What the hell did I call it? MLRV. Oh no, that's the test rig, isn't it? That's the PES test rig. And there's the Jeep over there with, uh... The astronauts parked in. Kerbinauts. So, here we are, ready to begin our launch to our destination, the moon. Alright, we'll have to circle around, come at it from this side. We'll have to do a single orbit, that's fine. Now, let's check all our systems. And I'm going to bring out the orbital operations, or orbital information, that's the one, sorry. I'm getting a little bit of lag here. And we're going to get ready to launch, of course. Right, Equinox Probe. Apparently we're orbiting Kerbin. <laughs> nice one, MacJeb. Okay. Begin the countdown. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. SAS on. Two. One. SRB ignition. And we have payload fairing slapping around. Our weather. We are accelerating incredibly fast in an upward motion, which is exactly the place we want to go. Up. Up is where it's at. There is no better place than up right now. And until up becomes over there, 
because there's no down in space. Ha 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 ha. We shall keep going. We're gonna have SRB burnout very shortly. Come on, I should have stuck some cameras on this, shouldn't I? Here they go, here they go. Separation and firing of the main engine. And where are those fuel tanks? Up there. Alright, let's keep a check on that map. Nineteen thousand apoapsis. We're gonna start our turn very glad gradually now. She's quite the wobbly rocket. The Napoleon launch system is a firecracker out of hell. We don't need too bad. We'll just put. Uh, I'm gonna try and get this to about a hundred kilometers. Preferably on the 90, but as you can see, we've got a lot of regal as we build up velocity. We are now on orbital speeds, pushing that up. Gonna bring it right over now. Alright, there we go. That's a hundred. It's gonna continue to drop. And we're going to ever so gently engage the engine so that we can straighten up. Shouldn't hurt too much. We don't need it perfectly circular. We're going to speed up ever so slightly. And here. That's where I want to be. That's where I want to be. Come on, girl. hideous amount of lag there for a second watching our stats here gotta bring that periapsis up I'm actually wondering why I'm getting so much lag I think it's because I might be I might have a few programs running in the background that I forgot to close or something we can solve that our periapsis is rushing out behind us that is not good for us Get back on the 90. Thank you. Right, perhaps this is rushing away from us right now. Okay. Right, that's a little bit eccentric. I'm actually going to pause it here and see if I can solve this lag problem because uh, we're getting a lot of stutter for no reason. Okay, so the game went really weird for a moment there. And, uh, yeah, crashed. So, uh, we make Jebbed back up here to save some time. I know, cheating. And, uh, this thing, it don't move very well in space at all. We've got a little drop of fuel left. We're going to use that to burn for the moon. But first off, we're going to have to do the payload separation or the uh, separation of the fairings. So let's get rid of those, shall we? Three, two, one, and... There they go. Yes, they're very derpy, these ones. And dangerous. Huh, I wonder if I've got enough fuel to even get to the moon. I should have, should have, should have. Now... Do we have RCS on this thing? I can't remember. No. Okay. 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 This might be difficult. Oh, come on, you son of a bitch. 
don't see why you gotta be hassling me like that. Alright, we're gonna fast forward until we see the moon. Then we're gonna panic and burn for the moon. While we're here, just flying around, uh, let's have a little random talk about things. Uh, 0 0.16 and how that's going to affect, uh, or not affect, campaign mode. Now, I bet you're all wondering, you know, EVA, something I want to do in campaign mode, of course, you know. Some people have mentioned, um, you know, get Katrina Kerbling out and uh, Jean-Luc and uh, that's bad, I can't remember the other guy's name the uh, Space Lab crew when they get transferred over to another vehicle we can do the uh, rendezvous and then um, switch crews like that which is a brilliant way of doing it uh, other such things uh, yeah when we go to the moon we want to actually get out and walk on it. So, uh, updating to 0 0.16, of course, is going to break my persistence file to shit. But I'm going to attempt to hack about and put things back in space. But uh, the issue is, of course, will those particular vehicles that I built even work? So, of course, I'm going to have to use relatively, you know, unupdated mods and stuff, and yeah, oh, 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 slow down, slow down, okay, good, 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 now if we put on the throttle ever so slightly, we should turn to prograde, because we've got prograde set on, then we can burn, Running on prograde. Ah, that's how far it got us. Not bad. Wow, we're getting a shit ton of lag. I don't know why I'm getting lag suddenly. Alright. Alright. Burning. We're burning. We're burning. Burning for the moon. Hopefully we'll have enough fuel for the entire operation. Come on. Jesus. They got quite streamer of them. They got the, the blah 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 blah. Got tongue tied. The engine blast is quite a streamer, isn't it? Yes. I'm also working on a uh, secret project real life project. Um, that won't be revealed until much later on. Uh, think of it as a plan for when I hit the next milestone in subscribers. If I do. I hope so. That'd be nice. That'd be lovely. But, you know, it's going to be fun. There's going to be fire. You know. Oh, yes. I was working on it a little bit this weekend. Uh, had the soldering iron out. Burnt myself a little bit. No, you gotta hurt yourself in the name of science. Molly is chasing a, f a moth around my room. And we're coming up to injection soon. Oh, look at that. Yeah, take a look at that, huh? We can burn just to bring that down a little bit. Oh, yes. Oh, shit. That's a little bit too low. Can we get retrograde, sir? What are you doing, Molly? Oh, there goes the mic. Yeah, no, uh, I wasted a little bit of fuel there. It's, uh, also of note is I am away from Wednesday and back Monday. And Monday's a day off that I can do stuff. But uh, I'm doing my other thing that isn't recording. 
I do other things that aren't recording, you know. Obviously, otherwise I don't. I'd have uh, a shit ton of videos, wouldn't I? <laughs> but no, um, I'm actually a reenactor. Um, uh, living history reenacting. You know, um, portraying historical events and scenarios and wartime stuff and crazy stuff like that. We get to fire guns. Real ones. It's a lot of fun, especially being English, since you don't really get to fire guns in England that much. Because, you know, we're a fascist nation and uh, we don't allow our populace weapons. Haha. <laughs> ah, here we are. The Equinox Probe. This is the first time we've actually had a moment to take a good look at her. I think the name was... Uh, from a person called Alcatraz, I think. I think. Might as well look it up and just continue talking. Um, yeah, so I'm going to be away for a few days. Uh, hopefully, I'll get uh, another video up. Just a random Kerbal Space Program video. I was playing Kerbal Space Program while in a Skype call with uh, a friend and. Uh, you know, just uh, 0 0.16 fun, of course. And there's just going to be lots of random nonsense. You know, don't watch it if you don't like it. <laughs> or you don't know if you like it until you see it. Ooh, the conundrum. The conundrum. Yes, but, you know, whatever. It's all good. Um, what else? What else do I have to blather on about? Hmm. Ah, Minecraft. Now, as you can probably tell, if you're one of the people who actually watch my Minecraft videos, I haven't actually done a lot of that at all lately. Because I've been more, you know, I mean, 16's come out for Kerbal Space Program. I know 1.3 for Minecraft's just come out, but that's pretty much nothing to me. That mean That's meaningless to me entirely. Because, you know, what is it? Oh, look, it's basically all the shit they've released in the shitty little um, snapshots all lumped together, and it's nothing of value to me absolutely there's nothing in there that makes me go ooh ooh the game just got a thousand times better you know so what am i going to do about that that's uh, probably why there we go yeah the alcatraz yep thank you the alcatraz for the name for this vehicle we might as well test our panels while we're here power for the journey brilliant that staging looks a little borked there doesn't it that's a broken bit of staging mm, we've got wow well, just over a third of a tank of fuel left to do the deorbit into the uh, intermooner majiggy landing and F8. Cameras. Oh, look. Ha! It's Kafrika. There it is, the Space Center just down there on that little little tip there. That's Kafrika. Just testing the cameras here. Very nice. The Equinox Probe. on her way to the sun <laughs> the moon which is just up there oh hello huh I wonder if we're gonna get an eclipse this is uh, something that's quite often and actually can be uh, kind of tracked in Kerbal Space Program you do get eclipses because obviously since uh, the sun or Kerbal the moon and Kerbin are on a you know they're on the same plane and you know 90 degrees plane um, eclipses actually happen very regular uh, I've only ever seen one but it was quite surprising at the time, I was like, ooh, what's going on? Yeah, it was very very interesting actually and I like that, I like that I don't know whether that was planned or anything like that but I'm, you know, it's, it's like an emergent little thing that's pretty cool I really like this fuel tank it's from the Nova Punch pack yeah, it was a recent addition in uh, the last update, I believe, to the pack. 
Wow, that's a lot of rambling. Anyway, we're gonna oh let's test the lights, shall we? Which little button does that? H The lights, they don't light much light much up in space now, do they? <laughs> okay. I am gonna leave this thing on the way to the moon and we are going to Oh what a brilliant shot. We came from there, circled around, all the way around the other side of the planet, and shot off to the moon. Neat! Screenshot! <laughs> oh yeah, what was I doing? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go back to the Space Center, and tally up the cost for all this because uh, I've been trundling along and I've not really been paying attention to the price of anything. So, yeah. Interestingly enough, I can't remember whether we had three MLRV tests or two. I will make a note of that to look that up after while I'm editing this video together and then I will amend the rules. I have a strange feeling it's three, but I've only written two down. You know, that's the fun of smashing up vehicles, I guess. And then, of course, we got the Jeep. So, what's this? What's this? With the new uh, test vehicle rules, the test vehicle MLRV, it cost only 7,995 because that was 25% of the price. Um, because it's a research thing, we got a 5,000 uh, Kenny reward. That actually brings the cost, the you know, the general cost for the vehicle down to you know just 2,000 something. Well, 2,900 and something. So that brought us down to 66,000. Then we did it again to 63,000. And then we bought the Jeep, which was 2,100. Uh, very cheap. That left us on 61,130. Then we had the rocket vehicle tests, which we are going to look up. Because we made a few of those. They weren't in here, though, were they? They were in the... Uh, Space plane hangar. All right, so damn it, I didn't save the first ones. Oh well, kind of a fuck up there. I didn't save the early one. We tested this three times, I think. Yes, three times. Gotta make a note of actually having the notepad out and reading it. We also had the failures beforehand. We had a couple failures. So let's say six overall. So six times 22,101. Can't leave me alone for a minute, I'm busy. Six times 22,101 equals a ridiculous amount of money that we don't have, but then we divide it by four equals 33,100 fucking hell. 33,100 thingy, plus that was six attempts, 1,000 each, that's 10, 20, that's 30. So that brings us from 33,151, well, 52, because we're rounding up, just down to 3,151. So that cost us 3,351. Brilliant. And that brings us down to, hang on, I've got to write this down. <laughs> Yeah, 61,130 take 3,152 equals 57,978. Lovely, jubbly. Then, of course, we had the rocket of extreme power. Let's load her up, shall we? There it is. Oh, I was just testing out the sky crane. And now I can't find... Where are you? Equinox probe. There it is. This is the final version. Now get out this one and shove that on there. 29,187. So, here we go, more simple math this time, 57,000. Uh, yep, so, er, bring that one back please. <laughs> 
silly calculator, 57,978. Take the illustrious sum of 29,187 equals 28,791. 28,791. So we've spent a shit ton of money. A shit ton of money. But it's all in the name of science. It's all in the name of getting to the moon. And uh, as I edit this video together, I'm going to, um, of course, actually watch and see whether I missed any things I did just on the fly and add them in. That's why I'm writing in pencil. And uh, as I said, I'm working on a secret project. Uh, I'm going to be recording some videos and uh, putting them up on a in a thread that already exists on the Kerbal Space Program forums. I've been uh, doing some research and uh, some science of my own. And uh, yes, things involving building things and soldering irons and cooking and uh cat what are you doing she's just like searching around my bed for a good place to sleep <laughs> silly girl yeah so you know that's something to look forward to but uh you know consider that a, uh, a surprise um oh what else hey girl hey molly's come to say hello hey girl do you want to play couple space program no because you fuck up rockets all the time no, I loved you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'll let you out in a second. Um, yeah, so there's always that. And what else am I blathering about? Yep, I'm away for a few days. Uh, I'm going to try and get another video out after this one. And I am running out of brain power to continue thinking right now. So I am going to say that I am about to wrap up this video. Splatter, splatter, splatter. Oh yeah, I'm also going to update the uh, Kerbal Space Program forum thread that I have for uh, campaign mode. I'm also going to put all the videos on there and uh, update it with the test rules. Yeah. So uh, be sure to check that out and if I have fucked up the numbers here because I've missed something the numbers will be all written there on the thread, so uh, rocking, because I'm actually going to start listing the actual thread, uh, listing the actual uh, numbers on the thread, you know, just to plot how it goes and have a nice visual representation of it to go along. Ooh, what's going to happen next episode? Well, that probe's got to get to the moon, and uh, I think we should start sending out maybe a couple deep space probes as well see if we can get one on an extra Kerbal flight out of uh, the solar system it'll take a few years to get out there but hey science is a long long and very unrewarding task that's nah, really rewarding you get to wear a lab coat and goggles seriously what more do you want in life I really have to get a good lab coat I used to have a lab coat, you know. Back when I was a kid, I had one of them science kits, um, you know, with all the chemicals and some war, iron oxide. And I had this little lab coat. I was so gutted when I grew out of it. I was like 10, I think. Mm. Happy memories of looking like a science. <laughs> Alright, so have a lovely day. Have a lovely day. Have a lovely week. Um, keep watching the skis, the skies. Her, her. Simpsons joke there. Oh, Leonard Nimoy. <laughs> Funny chap. Bilbo! <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have to go listen to the Bilbo Baggins song now. Shit. <laughs> um, yeah. Bye!